Here's some facts you may not know, and quite possibly, they're not even true. 98% of Americans think they drive better than anyone else. If that's true, can you imagine how bad those other 2% must be? About a third of all Americans flush the toilet while they're still sitting on it. Quite frankly, that's unacceptable and just gross. A sneeze zooms out of your mouth at over 100 miles per hour. It doesn't really matter if these are fact or fiction. For sure, if 98% of drivers think they're better than all the others, well, that just can't be, even though I'm near the top. Fact or fiction, when it comes to Jesus, there's no fact or fiction question more pressing than the resurrection. The resurrection is where Jesus was killed on a cross, buried in a tomb, and allegedly rose the third day. If this claim isn't correct, then not only is Easter a bust, but the whole idea of Christianity falls flat on its head as a hoax. Here's what the Bible claims in John 19, 38. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. It's Friday, early evening, and Jesus is dead. There was less than three hours between the time the soldier pierced Jesus aside and the setting of the sun. Joseph of Arimathea must move fast. He was a member of the Sanhedrin who instigated much of the crucifixion, but not Joseph. He's a secret disciple that feared excommunication from his religious buddies, so maybe the death of Jesus drew him out of hiding. Regardless, Joseph provides a new tomb, a private place, not a public cemetery for Jesus. These burial caves were maybe nine by nine and around six shelves high for the bodies. They put 75 pounds of spices and ointment, a very expensive burial, actually a burial fit for a king. They put Jesus in there. A huge stone was rolled in front of the tomb into a V that was cut into the ground so it wouldn't move. The tomb is then sealed and Roman guards are put in place to protect it. But three days later, the tomb is empty. The resurrection is the cornerstone of Christianity. I've listed a bunch of scriptures below. Paul says that if Jesus is not raised, Christians are a pitiable group of people. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. The resurrection validates Jesus as God's son. It validates Jesus' work on the cross, and it shows we can believe in him implicitly. It assures our own victory over death, but many people deny it for philosophical, religious, and even scientific reasons. So I'd like to identify five theories that deny the resurrection. The first theory is it's a stolen body. It's believed the disciples came and stole Jesus' body and then started the rumor he was risen. But there's two problems, motive and ability. How could 11 cowering disciples sneak past an armed Roman guard, roll away a gigantic stone without waking the guards, remove the body, and then start the rumor? Why would they even do that? It's reported that none of them believed it, even after someone claimed to see Jesus. And for a Jew to desecrate a burial site is unprecedented, and it would have been incredibly stupid for other grave robbers or thieves to rob a peasant's grave, unwrap a decaying body on site, and then tidy it up before they leave. Another theory is the swoon theory. Here they say Jesus never really died, but he was only swooned and then resuscitated. But after Jesus' flogging within an inch of his life, by the way, he was handed over to trained executioners and crucified. It's what they did. They even speared his side, probably puncturing his heart. Even if he was in a coma, the 75 pounds of spices and ointment and wraps would have suffocated him. Jesus Christ was dead. A third theory was the wrong tomb theory. They say that Peter, John, and all the other women went to the wrong tomb and mistakenly thought Jesus was raised hardly a choice. It was a private tomb, close to town, and brand new. It's also hard to imagine the mother of Jesus forgetting where her son had just been buried, especially when it was, when it was sealed with a huge stone and an armed guard. And it still doesn't explain where the body of Jesus was and why the Sanhedrin couldn't produce it on the day of Pentecost. A fourth theory, the hallucination theory, this is a good one. It's the idea that the disciples wanted so badly for Jesus to be raised that they hallucinated his appearances. The study of psychology demolishes this theory. 
groups of people don't simultaneously have the same hallucination. Maybe two or three people might similarly think on some point, but not all of them at the same time. The disciples didn't even expect a resurrection and wouldn't have hallucinated this, and again, the body is still unaccounted for. The final one is the myth theory. Here's the defense that it's the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are all literary fiction with little basis in historical reality. But if this were a mere fabrication, we'd almost certainly expect a number of differences from what we actually have in the Gospels. Likely, the women would not have been the first witnesses. If they were trying to pull one off on everyone, Peter and the gang would have immediately believed and surely would have claimed to have seen the event happen. Why would they start a lie about Jesus' resurrection. The disciples openly didn't even believe Jesus was raised when they were told about it. Why would they steal a body and start a lie that they didn't even believe in? And why would they die a martyr's death for what they knew to be a lie? Besides, to move a corpse from its resting place is a horrific defilement of both the dead body and the one moving it. And there were posted guards. These 11 scared disciples were sitting behind locked doors, John 20, 19, not moving boulders and removing linen strips. The evidence in favor of the resurrection is very compelling. Here's just a taste of what happened afterward. The conversion of 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost, about 50 days after the resurrection. The transformation of Peter and Paul. The martyrdom of the apostles. The continued sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper to this day. The worship day changing from Saturday, the Sabbath, to the first day of the week, Sunday. The continued testimony of the early church that it actually did happen. The changed lives of millions of Christians throughout history. The evidence is there. It's all true, folks. What does this mean for you? I believe you have two very real options to take. One, don't do anything. Continue to believe lies. or. Think it very well may be truth, but don't do anything about it. Or number two, take the next step with God. If you've been seeking God and wondering what to believe, and you've never crossed the line of faith to say yes to Jesus, today could very well be the day to do that. I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm asking you to consider the evidence. Is it time for you to choose Jesus? If so, please check the appropriate button and let's start a dialogue and walk you through what that might look like for you. It's all real, folks. It's all true. Jesus really did rise from the dead and he proved that he is the savior of the world. He proved his love for us and he provided us eternal life. Here's the fact. Jesus can take away all your sins. Don't let the enemy mess with your head and confuse the facts. Jesus really did live. He really did die. And he most certainly rose from the dead, and he really is preparing a place for those who put their trust in him. Until next time, God bless.